What's up, everybody? I'm back, and I'm resurrecting Stadium Reviews. Yes, that is right, ladies and gentlemen. I just got home from a family vacation to Chicago. Um, you know, we took over the weekend, and I visited two new stadiums while there. So I get stadium reviews for both of them. But the first one that we're going to be doing is Guaranteed Rate Field, home of the Chicago White Sox. Um... MLB Stadium, and it's located in the south side of the uh, city, and we went there for the second to last regular season game of the 2021 MLB season between the Tigers and the White Sox, and um, so yeah, it was um, White Sox 1-5-4, by the way, if you guys were caring or wondering about this, this will be going up longer after that game has concluded, um, but today I'm going to talk about uh, my game day experience at the stadium. Um, it was a Saturday night. Uh, it was a 6:15 original start. I say original because it didn't start on time. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, talking about my game day experience, how thought, you know, everything that went down, and overall give my final thoughts on the stadium. So let's jump into it. So we'll talk about first getting to the stadium. It actually wasn't that bad. It's not. There's not. Again, it's just an MLB stadium. So there's not a lot of parking. Um, it's kind of just stuck out in the rest, away from the rest of the city. Um, I don't like how it, it faces away from the skyline, so you get like horrible views and stuff. Can't even see anything once you're actually sitting in your seat, which is kind of stupid. But you know, whatever. It's something you can easily bypass. Um, but you get up to the stadium, and you, you have to. Most of the time, you, if you're gonna get like an Uber or something, uh, or like take a bus. Um, or you could take the train. A lot of people took the train. And we took the train. Train was pretty cool. This is not talking about the train, though. Um, but once you got there, there was like a mile-long line to get into the freaking stadium. What were they thinking? Apparently, like, they closed. They had plenty of gates. But only, like, two of them were open. So everybody... And this was this was an almost sellout crowd, by the way. Um, which they only see about 37, 38,000. Maybe a little bit less than that. But it was near packed so there are mile-long mile lines down the street they're trying to get into the stadium okay and normally this one again that's that's a big problem on its own especially since we got there like 30 minutes before the first pitch but also it was raining there was rain in the forecast for the night luckily it didn't rain too much the game did get delayed by about i think it was 20 25 minutes or something but that was fine we could deal with that um they actually gave us more time to get into the stadium um that was pretty annoying though them trying to regulate traffic and also there were people on the uh, sidewalk trying to sell you stuff and we were stuck with them and there were people doing drugs and then there were people you know there was cops everywhere trying to regulate people trying to move them into a certain line and then they had the masks and everything it was just really weird and overly complicated they could have definitely opened more gates i think they had plenty of staff and I don't know why. This is also, I think, maybe why there was um, a little bit more crowd was because there it was a free giveaway, um, limited amount of these like White Sox um, sweatshirts. I don't know if they were zip up or not. I don't know if they were, they were hoodies, but I don't know if they were zip up or not. I don't remember. Um, but so people were like cutting in line, pushing people out of the way, rushing to get those, and they would take like four or five at a time when there was only one person there. Okay. And they were, like, running out of certain sizes. We got a couple of them. You know, I'm not a White Sox fan, so I'll never wear it. But it's cool to have, you know, in case, you know, they something warm to sit in or you want to try and sell it as a Christmas gift or whatever. It's pretty cool to have. But I, that might have been why it was pretty ridiculous getting into the stadium. Um, but once we got in, I looked to my left, and there was the gift shop. I'm like, this is weird. Why is the gift shop outside the stadium? Um, I don't, there wasn't, there was, it was the, like, general Chicago sports shop. Um, that actually wasn't the official White Sox gift shop, so we didn't actually go in. We didn't know that at the time, though. And you could easily, it wasn't, like, so hard, it wasn't easy to come back out and, like, go in because there was no in-stadium entrance. It was, like, here's the stadium, and then here's the gift shop, but you have this big-ass gap to try and cross. So you have to come back out, go in, and then try and cross the bridge packed side to side with people trying to get in luckily though they did have a uh, actual gift shop called like i don't forget what it's called something something inside the stadium and um they had merch in there and i went in there and got a couple of pins so luckily didn't need to um 
uh, deal with that crowd. So that was pretty nice. But once getting into the stadium, again, it was packed, near sellout crowd. But luckily it was delayed a little bit, so we had time to walk around um, a little bit. It's not that even that big of a stadium either, which was pretty nice. We didn't even really walk around. Uh, we just walked to our seats, and we were pretty far away. So we did cover a lot of ground. There wasn't really much else to do besides the shop other than getting the food and then getting to our seats. We had pretty damn good seats, I'm going to tell you right. We had pretty damn good seats out in the outfield, like down the down the foul, foul line, which was pretty nice. And then the, one of the more iconic parts of the stadium, as you guys know, are the pinstripes that are on the top over the square. I think there's six of them. And they're like an ordered color. I think green, blue, red, and yellow, I think, are the four colors. And then there's six of them, so some of them have multiple and they were doing cool things, you know, we do pretend. But another thing, they, and then they have, like, um, they have a goose bar in, like, the private, like, Pepsi porch section. You know, they're not sponsored by Pepsi, they're sponsored by Coke. But there's a big goose sticking out of it. That's pretty fun. They have their own kid zone, which is actually near the upper deck in the left field. It's some designated area with a big sign. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then they have signs for the retired numbers and the uh, championships and all that great stuff. And, um... And they have a little, like, water fountain and stuff over in the private area. And so it was pretty cool-looking, nice stadium. It was small. It had an upper deck, but it only covered, like, the um, behind home plate down, close down the first and third base lines, but not all the way. Um, for the most part, most you, outfield, only one section. Um, and then down the foul lines was mostly just one section um, up to a point. But, man, could they pack him in. Holy moly. Uh, it was crowded. And again, the White Sox are going to the playoffs this year, so kind of makes sense. I don't know if they've been eliminated at the time this video goes live. I don't know when I'm going to put it up, so I could say that they may be eliminated from the playoffs. But anyway, moving on. Um, what I did like as well is they had paintings of pictures of like special moments in the stadium's history, such as when they hosted the World Series in 2005, the blackout game in 2008. I don't know what that was. Um, and a couple other things. Those were pretty cool as well. Um, during the game was pretty nice. We got the food, the food. Okay. We'll talk about the food for a minute. Okay. Because we were planning on getting dinner there because again, it was six fifteen first first pitch delayed a little bit. It started about six thirty, six forty five, somewhere around there. So we got dinner while we were there and we wanted a burger, but they don't have any burger stands except for one and you have one burger option, only one burger option. And it costs 13 bucks. If you're going to sell a burger for 13 bucks, at least have multiple options. No, they only had one option. And the other spots, they had hot dogs, all right, and they had pretzels, you know, general game day food. They had a mac and cheese bar, which was pretty good. I regret not getting anything from there. The rest of it was generic and stuff, but it was damn way too expensive. Everything, everything in Chicago is way too expensive. Um, they had a pizza stand that was pretty good. Um, the food was okay, actually. I shouldn't shit on it too much. Um, coming into my next stadium review, but anyway, it was not that bad actually. I I kind of enjoyed it. Overpriced, yes, for just generic ballpark food. So, and they had some more unique options such as like you know ice cream and special alcoholic stuff. And then there was like you know the mac and cheese bar. So there was there was options, plenty of options up and down on um, the main concourse section of the park, which is pretty nice. And then during the game, um, they shot off fireworks at the beginning during the um, pregame intros. And they also, they played like a little light show. They had special LED lights um, up on the top that shine down on the field. So they could do like special um, light shows. They also do special light shows like uh, when they win or when they uh, hit a home run. And so that was pretty cool. The pinstripes when they hit a home run, they do uh, special cool things as well. Um, and they have... The, the fountain didn't shoot off stuff. I thought it did. The fountain. I thought the fountain shot off stuff when they hit a home run. It didn't. It just kind of just sits there and drizzles water, which is a little pretty boring. And they shot off fireworks like four times during the game. Also, because that's the thing. Like, do you really need to shoot off fireworks that much during the game? I guess so. I mean, I could shoot them off at the end, I thought, but I guess not. Um, but another thing I did like during the game, um, we had pretty good views during the game again tigers lost four to five so you know the crowd got into it because the tigers choked the 4-0 lead in the seventh but that was pretty cool but yeah i mean the, the crowd's into it and they were they were loud man they were freaking loud especially at the end of the game when they were about to win um definitely cool to be in like this like playoff environment level 
crowd, which is pretty nice. I also like during the game on the uh, scoreboard, they were when pe- players came out to bat, um, didn't matter what team they were from, they could have been from the opposing team, they have facts about them, cool little facts, and like special historical moments from the, uh, the White Sox as well, which are pretty cool, and pictures and everything. I thought that was pretty cool. The Tigers don't do that. Um, that was pretty informative. I, I like the inf- I like the history. I like the information. That stuff was pretty cool. Um, some to read while well, in between the six hours of dead time, in between pitches, which is pretty cool. And um, there was a lot of foul balls hit up in the deck too. That was pretty funny. Seeing them all fly up there, um, those were pretty fun. But yeah, I mean overall, it was a pretty fun experience. The weather held off. Outside of the delay, the weather held off which was pretty nice, and overall, we had a pretty fun experience. Um, the fans, I read online when reading reviews about the stadium, the fans weren't really going to be into it. They were pretty into it, I thought. Um, maybe that's just because they're going to the playoffs this year. Uh, it's because they won the division, or yeah, I don't know. I don't know what what the difference was, but they seemed pretty into it. Um, I don't think they're as passionate as other as the Tigers, I mean, Detroit is with the Tigers or um, even like St. Louis is with the Cardinals, but I mean, they're passionate. They were loud. They were into it. They were having fun. Um, I thought that was, that added to the awesome um, game day experience. Plus the weather held off. So it made for a pretty good fun night. Um, I had a lot of fun and uh, got to watch some fun baseball as well. Even though the Tigers again did choke away, away a lead, which kind of, which pretty much sucked. So, Overall, though, um, my final score for this stadium, I guess you can call it a score, I guess. Um, I'm going to give it a good 7. Um, I think the location is not that great. Um, there's not a lot to do around the stadium. It's just like a little run-down area. And so there's not, not a lot of good parking options if you want to try and drive. Um, so you got to really take an Uber. you got to take a train. you got to take a bus. Um, unless you're like VIP or something like that. And, you know, it's in the south side, so it's pretty run down. There's not a lot to do before and after the game other than being at the stadium, which I think is, is a kind of part of the reason why they're not the more popular team in Chicago, um, as far as baseball goes, at least. So that could do some work. But the once you get into the stadium, it's pretty nice. Um, they have their own Wi-Fi. I actually forgot to mention that. My phone automatically connected to their Wi-Fi because they uh, use Xfinity. And I'm a Verizon customer. So that was pretty cool. But kind of unnecessary. I didn't think that was actually going to do that. But I guess. I don't know. That was all right. Yeah, I'm going to give it a score of 7 out of 10. Again, it could use a better location. But I think overall the experience was pretty fun. Um, outside of, you know, trying to get in. And then, you know, a few complications with the crowd and stuff like that. So, anyway, that's going to be my review. Um, if you guys have ever been to Guarantee Ray Field, or better known as uh, Comiskey Park, um, let me know in the comments down below how your game day experience was and, um, what other awesome MLB stadiums I should visit next. So till next time, guys, I'll see you guys in the other stadium reviews. Goodbye.